Hi, my name is Gail Larned, and I'm a fiber artist. I started playing with uh, ropes and fibers when I was 19. Somebody showed me a macrame handbag. It was the most exciting thing I'd ever seen. So I pretty quickly after that learned to tie square knots and made a bunch of necklaces and plan hangers and all that kind of thing for a few years. When in about 1973, uh, friends commissioned me to do a wall hanging for their parents' 25th wedding anniversary. It was my first commission. In 1975, I had my first professional art show at Gallery 200 here in Columbus. Since then, I've been um, tying knots and wrapping coils, which I will show you how to do later on. Uh, most of my work these days is involving coiling, uh, which is the technique of wrapping one fiber around another. Um, so today we're going to look at some of my more recent work, um, the flowers that you see behind me here. And um, the flowers were um, actually uh, inspired by the corn at the Department of Agriculture. Um, the corn was the first piece that I had used wire inside of my coils and so the stargazer lily is my favorite flower and I was sitting here looking at a vase of stargazer lilies and I thought well I can make that because I'm using the wires inside of the coils and so I made this was the first flower the stargazer lily now this stargazer is attached to the wall in about 15 places so it lives here permanently but the other flowers, the hibiscus here and some others that we'll see upstairs, um, are attached to the wall at one point, which I will show. And um, so I've been doing the flowers for about four years now. I've done a few commissions for them. And um, just recently, the Greater Columbus Arts Council awarded one of my flowers in the Business Art Partnership Award to a local um, uh, law firm. Crab Brown and James, and we installed that, and it looks lovely. So um, I've also uh, do a lot of percent for art commissions and commissions for people for their homes and for their businesses. I really like doing commission work because it gives me a chance to work one on one with people, and I've come up with some really interesting designs and the needs of the client and my what I'm interested in doing, and that comes together sometimes makes a whole new um, whole new design that's really fun. So I like working like, like that and getting to know people who are going to live with my artwork. So um, that's kind of a little in a nutshell. And we can go from here and see some hands-on how you make coils. So here we go. So here we are in this, my studio, and um, I'm going to show you how to make a coil. Now, the idea is that one thing wraps around another thing. I wrapped about the first thousand coils by hand, and then uh, a friend helped me design this coiler unit that I'm using now. Interesting, I went out to uh, San Francisco and met another fiber artist who was doing coiled work, and he had built the same principle, same unit. So. So first you have to put the core on. I'm using sisal here. And I have um, a Milwaukee drill with a hook and another hook down here that turns. So what I'm going to do is attach my core onto both of these hooks. And I don't want to do it too tightly because when I start to wrap the coil, it will get too tight if I tie it on too tight to begin with. So you just have to kind of figure that out. Uh, I'm going to wrap with a satin rat tail, which is what I use for the flowers, so that you can see that. So I attach what I'm wrapping with to the core with masking tape. Just to hold it in place until I start wrapping. And then I have a toggle switch here that's going to turn on the drill so it's a little loud. So here we go.
So there you are. It's easier than wrapping by hand. I still have to be here though. So tie that off. And then I can just cut this because I don't need that cord anymore. And voila, a coil. Now, if I was going to do the flowers with this, I would put wire inside of here, aluminum wire. For some things, I don't need it to be rigid. Uh, for instance, when I'm knotting, this is, uh, well, this, this, these are coils that are sewn together. And so I would use a soft coil for this. And this, um, there's a similar element on one of the flowers that you've already seen, I think. So the next thing that happens is the individual elements are assembled. So here we have um, the coils are sewn together on the back with sinew. And then... Um, the color is airbrushed on. I'm airbrushing dye. I've always dyed my own rope. Um, previous to the flowers, I was doing a vat dyeing where you just kind of put it all in a bucket and dye so everything's the same. With the airbrush, airbrushing the dye, first of all, the, it allows the color of the, or the sheen of the satin to come through. So it really has a nice reflective quality. This is sisal. So you can see the two different materials here next to each other. So I assemble the individual elements, and then I apply the color, airbrush the color, and then I attach them to a wooden base. So um, let me grab this. So they are attached to a wooden base that has a hole drilled in the center and an attachment on the back. So hung by one point, just a nail or a screw head through here. And um, so this is basically how the flowers start being put together. Then the individual um, petals are all attached to the base. And then I do the, the um, sex organs of the flower, the interesting part of the flower. So this uh, flower is a lady slipper native to Ohio. And um, I wanted to share this because the dyeing here really shows the control that I can get with the airbrushing the dye on, really kind of a, a bleeding of color and a, a soft transition of color. And also, the bottom part of the lady slipper is the um, soft coils that are sewn together that I talked about earlier. And so, um, this piece has been in a couple of shows. It was in the Best of 2000 show at, um, at the Ohio Designer Craftsman at the Ohio Craft Museum. And it's actually um, going to reside in a friend's house. A friend is getting it for her birthday from her husband. So. Okay, so another thing I do is I make these baskets, which... Um, they're fun to make. They're, you know, all a little bit different. They have beads on them and stuff. And they're really ni they make really nice gifts. And um, so I enjoyed making them. As, like I said, you know, I like to have different things going on in the studio. So the way the baskets work is, first of all, I start with a coil. This is that coil that I made a little bit ago. And... I'm going to use raffia to put it together. So first I have to tie this together to make my starting point. So I want to tie this pretty tightly here. I want it to stay really tight. And then I'm going to sew this together. So it's, it's kind of like um, the process of Native American baskets in that I'm trying to find a needle that I can thread here. Ah, there we go. So um, it's a similar, it's a coiled basket, but I'm kind of approaching it from a different angle. Uh, traditionally, um, Indian coil baskets are it's coiled as it's put together. Well, I make the coils first, and then I put it together. So basically, I want to make a circle here. And I also want to keep a nice design going as I 
make my shape. So I'm just sewing this around. As you can see on these, this is the part I'm doing, this, this bottom part that has that nice kind of spiraling design. When I do artists in the schools, I forgot where I, what my train of thought was on that. Oh, spirals, right. Um, so I, I talk to them about sp spirals and circles in nature and where you see that image in nature and how every th all of life is a, uh, a circle from birth to death to rebirth. And um, so the the process of coiling, making the spiral pattern, all has a, a spiritual element to it for me. And as well, it's pretty meditative, you know, just kind of doing the making the coils or sewing and making the basket. It, um, it really kind of, uh, I can let my mind go and... Um, kind of get into a meditative state. So I'm attaching another little piece of raffia here. So basically this process just goes until I have the bottom part as big as I want it to be. And then I do the sides and and then at the very end the embellishment, the beads and whatnot that go on there. So have to use a pretty big-headed needle here. So making that spiral pattern, just kind of going around and around and around. Have to pull it pretty tight. Want it to be nice and tight. And then as it gets larger, I add other veins, other spokes that will come out from the center. So I want it all to line up and make a nice clean pattern here. Okay, I'm about to run out of raffia too, so... Are we on? Yes. I have a number of things over here on the wall that I could share. Um, and I do a workshop where I have people um, start off with a stick and then add things to it like feathers and beads and found objects. And each object that they put on their spirit doll represents an attribute that they want to incorporate into their lives or something that they want to celebrate in their lives. So, and the workshop takes about an hour. We work in silence, so it's a very introspective uh, process where you really get in touch with your, um, your inner knowing. And um, people have shared with me that they've really had breakthroughs in this process, that the process seems to access something deep within them. And then they have the spirit doll to remind them of what they are celebrating in their, in their lives and what they want to work on. So that's the spirit dolls. And then, I don't know if you can see these little tiny fairies here. Um, I had a show with the flowers and I wanted to have the fairies and the flowers because when I was growing up, um, my aunt lived across the lake from New Orleans where I spent a good bit of time growing up and Aunt May and she um, took me out into her garden and said, do you believe in fairies? And I said, oh, yes. And she said, well, if you believe in fairies, you can, there are fairies in my garden. And I saw the fairies in her garden, and they were about this big, and they were 
lit up and flying around. So when I had my first show with the flowers, I called it the Enchanted Garden and wanted to have some fairies to um, recall that experience that I had as a child, which was really great. So I wish everybody had an Aunt May to show them fairies. <laughs>